What's up guys, welcome back to Unreal Dev Hub. In today's video, we are going to talk about the differences between masked and translucent materials. We'll learn how to make them, what the benefits is of each, the performance implications, and when you should use each type of material. Let's jump in. All right, let's check out a quick demo. In my scene, we have a series of spheres on the left with a translucent material and on the right with a masked material. We're going to use this to visualize the main difference between how materials are rendered with masked and translucent materials. So in the top left, in my uh, viewport mode dropdown, I'm going to go to optimization view modes, shader complexity. We can see that as I look down the length of these, the translucent materials on the left become increasingly complicated as they're layered. And on the right, the masked material is still in the green, which means it's extremely performant. So what does this actually mean? So when I look down the length of these, the light is being continuously rendered through each passing sphere. So the masked on the right, once it experiences an opaque pixel, light is not rendered behind it. So if you think about on the left, if we're looking through 10 panes of glass, we continue to see the changing of light qualities rendered by Unreal. Uh, as I move back with each progressive pane, but on the right, uh, it is a series of masked pixels, so it's only values of 1 and 0 for opacity. So let's jump in now to sort of prove this out in a material. So I'm going to go back to my lit mode, and in our content drawer, I'm going to create a new material. I'll right click, create a new material, and we'll call this M underscore translucent. And in my material, I'm going to double click. And first we'll just recreate the material effectively that we have in our viewport. So I'll right click. Actually, I'm just gonna press three on my keyboard and left click. I could also use a float three, but I prefer to do it that way. So I'm gonna make this color red and hit okay. We'll drag this into our base color. So by default, if I select this properties panel over here, we'll see that in our blend mode in the left here, in our material details, it is set to opaque. This is where we're going to set our values for masked or translucent. So opaque, meaning that it is completely solid and we cannot see through this material. Uh, first, we'll start off with translucent and we'll show what the difference is between translucent and masked. So I'll select translucent and we'll see that a lot of these values have disappeared, but the opacity value has popped up. So if I right click and say texture sample, I'll hit return and I'm going to drag my RGB value into opacity. And down here where it says texture, I'm going to search noise and I'm going to use, uh, let's see, I'll use noise 01. So we can immediately see in our preview that now, you know, we can see through this material and see through to the environment. So it's a little cloudy, it's a little wispy, but we can see specifically that the values change from completely, uh, you know, more solid to nearly completely see-through. And so that's because in a translucent material, the values, you know, in this grayscale texture go from uh, black, which has a value of zero, and white, which has a value of one. And those correlate to black being completely transparent and white being completely opaque. So now in the same material, if we were to drag this RGB value into opacity mask, yes, it's grayed out for now, but when we select over here in our materials panel and go to masked, we'll see a completely different version of this material. So obviously this doesn't look super stellar. Uh, if we change this to a plane, we can see that it has created uh, a little bit, bit of a blockier version where things are either completely transparent or completely opaque. And so you might be asking, what is the value that controls that threshold of what is opaque versus what is transparent? And that is this opacity mask clip value here. By default, it is at 0.33, but if we were to change this to 0.5, it's basically going to change the threshold in which the material will render opaque or transparent when we're using a mask material. So I'm going to reset this to 0.33, and now let's make this look good. All right, so I'm going to keep this texture sample, and we'll, 
we'll return this to be our translucent material. So I'm going to change this from mask to translucent. And I will create a series of parameters. So I'm going to, I'm going to right click and I'll say scalar parameter. I'm going to change this name to alpha, which will be our zero to one value in which we'll control our opacity. So I'm going to change the slider max to one and we can keep it as default at zero for now. And we're going to do this on a switch so that we can basically toggle between a texture and just a flat color. So I'll pull off of here. So I'm going to just right click and I will say switch. Uh, so I'll do static switch. Switch. I'm going to use static switch the function. Um, so again, that was uh, static switch and I used the function this one. Uh, so I'm going to drag this into true and then I'm going to drag a multiply off of that. I will drag the RGB value into the B and I will drag multiply into false. I'll set this to true for now and I'm going to drag this value into the opacity. And so by default, we set the alpha to zero. So if we change this to 0.5, we will see that we have this sort of panel that is 50% opaque. And if we hit this Boolean right here, we can change this to switch from back and forth between the smoky texture and the flat texture. So this will allow us to compare with our masked material in just a moment. So I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna browse to it in my content drawer. And I'm actually going to select this and I'm going to press control D on my keyboard or I could right click and duplicate, but I'm gonna use the hotkey control D. And I'm gonna call this M underscore masked. So I will double click into this and now we have all of the same logic right here. And what I'm going to do now is we're going to configure this to be masked and we're gonna compare the two side by side. So all of this stuff is great. And what we're going to do is use a node called the dither temporal AA, which is, I believe, anti-aliasing. So if I drag off here and type dither, we're going to only get this one function by default. I'll hit return. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to plug this value into our alpha. We'll pull off of this random and create a scalar uh, scalar parameter and I'll call this random and I'm going to drag the result into opacity mask. I'm going to select my properties and we're going to change this from translucent in the material properties to masked and we can unplug this opacity value and let's save this for a moment and let's hit this boolean to be false so that we can sort of see our smoke. So now we can see, set this to plain. I'm starting to see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn off my background by going to show and background. Um, I can start to see the outline of this smoke and it looks a little bit sort of posterized right now. If we change the randomness value, the more you increase the randomness value, the less it will look sort of uh, posterized, almost like an Adobe Illustrator effect and creates that sort of natural smoke. So if I change this to one, it looks more similar to what I had previously with the translucent. So if I go over here, if I put these two materials side by side, which we'll do in our main map in just a moment, we can see that these are starting to look very similar. And we can, you know, use these in a material instance if we want to hone in on an exact value. And you will also note just generally that when you have a random value, when it is one, um, it can create artifacting that looks a little odd and feels a little blurry sometimes in the environment. So depending on what your visual looks for, how long a particular material is on screen, uh, you might want to play around with this random randomness value. So let's save this and we'll save this. Going to minimize this for the screen. And so I'm going to select my spheres and you can just sort of throw a series of objects into the environment. I just use spheres. Um, 
actually, you know what? I will do this. So I'm going to select these. On my first one, I will put our masked material, which we've just created. So I'll select this. I'll plug it in right here. On the right, I'm going to use our translucent material. And we can see right off the bat that these two look relatively similar. Obviously, um, we want to make sure that the values of translucency are the same. So here we have 0.5. Let's set it to 0.5 for our mass material because we have that alpha as one. So I'll set this as 0.5. And once we do that, we should be able to see in our environment that from a distance, these two are very similar in appearance. So now we can see that actually first we'll just use the uh, view mode for optimization for shader complexity. We can already see that even with one sphere, so this being our translucent on the right, this is significantly less performant than the mass material. So again, what's happening is that all of these pixels, so you can sort of see if we zoom in, all of these pixels render only the pixel and nothing behind it. There is no true light blending that's happening from this material, and it's not accepting sort of blends from other light in the background. So basically, this pixel is solid, nothing is rendering behind it. And if we look here, it's less performant because it's layering in the light qualities of things happening in the background. And so now, if we go back to our lit mode, if I select my two spheres, which if you're having trouble selecting them, press T, which allows you to uh, either select or not select translucent objects in your environment. So if I grab the, these spheres now and I duplicate them, I'm going to do it five times. And I go back to my optimization view mode. So I'm going to go optimization view mode, shader complexity. We can already start to see that the masked material is functioning super well. There's like really no issues with it. But then the layering of the translucent material is really bad. So why does this matter? If you're using a lot of VFX in your environments, you're using, let's say, particle effects in combat and explosions and fire and smoke, having many layered translucent material sprites or meshes can be extremely bad for your performance. It's going to sort of throttle your GPU. It causes a lot of, you know, unnecessary expense on rendering. And if you can avoid it, you want to find smarter ways to work with your materials and make things masked instead of make them uh, translucent. And that's not to say that you can't have translucent materials in your game. You just have to be sort of smart about when they might be layering on top of each other and make sure that you're not sort of, you know, burning computer power in unnecessary ways. So um, that is the sort of gist of, of why you would use either of these. Obviously, things like glass are going to want to be translucent. Uh, however, things like smoke or dust might want to use uh, masks uh, at times to um, make it, you know, that you're not hurting your performance. So that is all for today's video. I hope you learned something new and stay tuned for more Unreal Engine 5 content and tutorials. Thanks all.